Praise the Lord. Church has said, Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray that all the teaching and the doctrine and the revelation of the study will be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. Miracle of the opening eye. Miracle in your life. Spiritually. Physically. In your family. And the things you have not seen for a long time. The Lord will miraculously open your eyes tonight. You will see it in Jesus' name. One thing I know. You will not go back home empty-handed. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for the Bible study. We're asking tonight, Lord, you really and truly, miraculously, open our eyes to see what we ought to see in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, we'll behold and we'll see, we'll understand wondrous things out of your word in Jesus' name. Direct us. Lead us. Show us the way and show us the path we ought to go. And Lord wants to show us and you reveal yourself plainly and clearly to us will not depart from your way in Jesus' name. Confirm your word in every life and let the study of today be of benefit and profit to everyone without exception. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. 2020, Amen. God bless you. you. Can see now we're coming to Mark chapter ten. Mark chapter ten. I'm reading from verse forty-six. And he came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and to say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And he called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good cheer, be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately, somebody shout immediately. And Jesus is still the same. Yesterday, today, and forever, Jesus is still the same. He'll do the same thing in every life tonight in Jesus' name. And immediately he received the sight and followed Jesus in the way. He received the sight immediately and he followed Jesus in the way. Tonight we're looking at that passage. And the topic tonight we're looking at is the great miracle of opening blind eyes. The great miracle of opening blind eyes. There might be people there that will think, what's what the use of that for me? I can see. My eyes are not blind. And since I'm not blind, why are we studying this? Number one, because it's the scripture. And we need to study all the scriptures. And even if you are not physically blind, God has something for you. Because all things that were reaching in a full time, they were reaching for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Number two, blindness is not limited to the physical. 
There are people that are blind to things they ought to see in their personal life to make progress and they cannot see. And until the Lord will open your eyes, you will not see tonight. It will open your eyes of understanding in Jesus' name. Number three, there are times that the Lord Jesus Christ himself might appear to you and you will not know that this is the Christ, your Redeemer, your Savior. And until he opens your eyes, you will not see, you will not know. And so in a way, spiritually, many people are blind. The Lord Jesus Christ joined the people on the way to Emmaus. And they were discussing about Christ, about his death, about the fact that it was buried three days ago. And, and now some people went to the sepulcher and they said they couldn't see him. And he was right there talking to them because he was asking them, what are these communications you have among yourselves? Until he was about to leave, they said, why don't you stay with us? And he went to them, and then they sat at the table. And when they broke the bread, all of a sudden, their eyes were open. And they saw that this is Jesus. You see, we need the opening of our eyes, of our understanding, of our mind, and also of the spiritual revelation of the Lord that he gives unto us. You might remember the servant of Elisha. This servant of Elisha could see all the army of the Assyrians around, but could not see beyond that. And he woke up in the morning and said, we're in trouble. There's terrible problem here. My father, my father, what shall we do? And the man of God said, Lord, open his eyes. When he opened his eyes, they, when the Lord opened his eyes, he could see the chariots of fire and the chariots from heaven saying to protect them. He thought they had no cover. He thought they had no protection until God opened his eyes. The Lord will open your eyes. You will not be blind to your progress. You will not be blind to the promise of God. You will not be blind to the provision God has made for you in Jesus' name. He will open the eyes of your mind and the eyes, even your physical eyes, you will see what you have never seen. And because of what you see, you are going to make progress, much, much progress, more than you ever made any other year. This 2020 will be a year of progress for you. A year of performance for you. A year of realization for you. And part of that in making it a year of progress, a year of performance, and a year of uh, great things for you is that it will open your eyes tonight. It will begin to happen to you. The topic is the great miracle of opening blind eyes. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the condition and the cry of the blind. The man heard that Jesus was passing by and he began to call and he began to cry out and he began to pray and he began to plead, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Number one, the condition of the blind and the cry of the blind. Number two, the confidence and commitment to believing. That is, he believed the Lord. He had confidence in the Lord. The Lord can solve my problem. The Lord can solve your problem. The Lord will solve my problem. The Lord will solve your problem. He had that confidence. He had that commitment to believe in. He kept on believing. They said, shut up. They said, don't say that again. They said, you are making a noise. They said, that's enough. And he shouted and cried out the more. A great deal. The confidence and the commitment to believe in. Point number three. The kill and the conversion of the believer. He believed the Lord. And as he believed the Lord, he had the kill. He had the recovery. The recovery of his side. And he had the miracle of the opening of the eyes. As you believe the Lord tonight, he will open every door before you. He'll open the way before you. 
and what you have been waiting for, you have not seen for a long time. This is your day. I will see. I said I will see. You will see in Jesus' name. And the man did not only receive physical healing, he did not only receive natural sight, he received a change of heart, a change of life. And there was conversion, I was told. After his eyes were opened, he followed Jesus in the way. He knew the right thing. Instead of going here and there, seeking for this and seeking for that, he said, I must follow the Lord. If he could do this in my life and turn my life around just like that, just as I believe in him, and he said, receive your sight, and I receive, there is more coming from him, I'm going to receive more. From what you have here today and what you have today, you receive more in Jesus' name. The cure and the conversion of the believer. We're coming to point number one. The condition and the cry of the blind. The condition and the cry of the blind. We're coming to Mark chapter 10 verse 46 again. And he came to Jericho. And, he, and as he went out of Jericho, with his disciples and with a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside begging. Jesus was going out of Jericho. Actually, this was the last chance of this man. Christ was not to come back to Jericho after this time. It was the last time Jesus passing through Jericho, going out of Jericho, and going to Jerusalem, and the man seized the moment. He seized the hour. He said, this is my chance. I pray you'll not miss your chance. Anytime the Lord is passing your way, in Jesus' name. Look at verse 47. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he heard, he heard, what you hear will do you good. What you hear will lift you up. What you hear will bring conviction on you. What you hear will lead you to prayer in Jesus' name. There are many people that hear, they just hear. And there's no action on what they have heard. They just hear there is uh, no progress through what they have heard. There is no prayer. And there is no persistence from the things they have heard. He heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. And he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. Many, not only one or two, all the people that pass by, they say, hey, blind man, shut up. Blind man, you're crying too much. Blind man, Let's uh, have some silence here. Let's have some peace. And many people, one, two, three, ten, as they pass by, they were telling him, shut up, shut up, shut up. And the man did not allow the many waters to quench the fire that he had in his soul. The many people that shout you down will not overcome you. The many people that try to shout you down will not uh, make you stop your prayer and make you stop what you ought to get from the Lord in Jesus' name. And many charged him in verse 48 that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal. He cried the more a great deal. He was saying, I know you have heard I'm crying. I know you have heard I'm shouting. I know you have heard I'm pleading, but I'm not talking to you. I'm not pleading with you. I'm not crying to you. I want the person I'm crying to, to hear my voice. And until he hears, and he does something about that, I will not stop. I pray you'll have that same mind. And so we're told, he cried the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. The condition and the cry of the blind. We're coming to John chapter 9. John chapter 9. We're reading from verses 8 and 9. John chapter 9, verses 8 and 9. The neighbors, therefore, 
this is another blind man who was born blind. The neighbors therefore, and they which before had seen him that was blind said, Is not this he that searched and begged? You know what they did in those days? They were dependent on other people. Once they were blind, they couldn't go to school. Once they were blind, there was no way they could read. Once they were blind, there was no way they could walk. Things are a little bit different today. But you see, the blind people of those days, all they could do was to sit by the side way and be begging. And some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him. But he said, I am he. He had got his miracle. And he said, I am he. You will testify. I said you will bear testimony. Look at chapter, that chapter 9, verse 19. In verse 19, it says, And they asked them, saying, Is this your son, who ye say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son. And that he was born blind. <clears throat> but now the new he could see. How did he come to see? The Lord Jesus touched him. And the Lord Jesus sent him to the pool of Siloam and said, Go and wash. The same Lord will touch you tonight. He has not changed the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is still touching people that are blind. Now the Pharisees, they are going to ask the Lord Jesus a question. And it's very important, very instructive for you and for me. Look at verse 39. And, and Jesus said, For judgment am I come into this world, that they which see not might see. Look at that. He said, that's why he came, that the blind might see. But then he goes on to say, and that they which see might be made blind. The people that see will see. Were not blind. But Jesus said, that's why he came, that the people that see not might see. That the blind might see. But the people that profess and the people that proclaim that they can see, those are the people that actually will be blind. I hope they understood. Look at verse 14. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? We can see. Are not blind? And we go around, we open our eyes, we read, we see, we go about. Are you saying that we are blind also? Verse 41, Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. That is, if you were blind, and you accepted you were blind, I would have opened your eyes, I would have converted you, I would change your heart, I would change your life, and then you will really properly see, and you will not have any sin. But now ye say, we see. Therefore, your sin remaineth. You remain blind spiritually. Because you say, we we'll see, we we'll see. As we look at the study tonight, you want to understand that there are many people who are walking about and they see in the natural and they see in the physical, but they are blind. Look at Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah Chapter 56, and I'm reading from verse 10. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 10. It's what men are blind. Look at that. It's what men, the preachers, the soul winners, the evangelists, those who are to declare the mind of the Almighty God to the children of Israel, they are called what men. It's what men are blind. They are all ignorant. Ignorance and blindness, they go together. If you are ignorant of you, who you are, you are blind. If you are ignorant of who your Savior is, you are blind. If you are ignorant of the life to live and the way to go, you are blind. If you are ignorant of your redemption, you are blind. This is what men are blind. 
They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Let's come to Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59. We're reading from verse 10. Isaiah chapter 59. We're reading from verse 10. It says, We grope for the wall like the blind. We're moving. We're walking. We're going around. But we're groping for the wall, for the wall like the blind. And we grope as if we had no eyes. We have eyes to see in the physical. We have eyes to see in the natural. But it says we're groping. And we're moving around as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday. When people stumble, they stumble and fall into the pitch. They stumble and fall into sin. They stumble and fall into evil. They said, but I didn't see that pit there before. I didn't see that calamity there before. I didn't see that uh, stumbling block there before. But they have eyes to see. And they are falling and falling every time. It says, and we stumble at the noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men, as the blind, as dead men. And look at Genesis. Something is very instructive, very important here. As we are talking about blindness, you know, sometimes you can see in the physical. But then you don't see what's good for you, what's right for you, what's pro pro proper for you. And what will take you out of the uh, beach in which you are and get to the goodness of the Lord. Tonight, the Lord will open your eyes. Church, I said tonight, the Lord will open your eyes. Look at Genesis chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 15. This is what we are talking about. That the Lord will touch your life. That the Lord will transform your life. That the Lord will open your eyes. And what you ought to see of the provision of the Lord, you will see it in Jesus' name. Genesis 21 verse 15. And the water was pent. That means the water finished in the bottle. And she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and she sat down over against him, over the child, a good way up, as if it were a bow shot. For she said, let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and uh, lifted up her voice and wept. Here is uh, the mother of a child, and there was no water, and there was nobody with them. All the water, all the resources they had, everything had finished. And she was thinking, my child is going to die. Thank God your child will not die. And as she was thinking like that, she began to weep because there was no water and they were in the desert. Look at this, look at this, verse 17 now. And uh, God heard the voice of the Lord. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What healed thee, Hagar? Fear not. For God has heard the voice of the Lord where he is. The Lord has heard the voice of your cry. The voice of your concern. What did the Lord do? Look at verse 18. Arise, lift up the Lord and hold him in thine hand. For I will make him a great nation. That is, the person, the mother thought is dying and is going to die. There's no remedy because there's no sustenance, because there's no water. Here is a desert place and there is no way I can get water to revive this child. Look at verse 19 now. And God, somebody there tell me. And God, somebody there shout it out. She wasn't physically blind. The well of water had been there all the time. And the supply had been there all the time. But she could not see. And because she could not see, she was crying. Your solution, the solution to your problem is so very near. 
there's no reason to cry. But because you cannot see the solution, you cannot see the provision, that's why she was crying. I was told in that verse 19, and God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. And God was with the lad. And he grew and he dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. You can see that. You see what the Lord is saying? That even though you might be seen in the physical, but there are some things you cannot see. The well of water is there. The provision is there. The solution is there. The spiritual breakthrough is there. And what will nourish your life, everything is there, but you cannot see. Therefore, you'll be crying for nothing. You'll not cry again. You will not weep again. The Lord will open your eyes, the well of water, and the provision abundant that's available for you, available for, uh, to meet the need of your life, you will see in Jesus' name. We're coming to 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 14. 2 Kings chapter 6, we're looking at verse 14. Therefore said he, he theater, horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my father, how shall we do? That's what you call insecurity. They woke up early in the morning, and Elisha had been ministering to the king in Damascus. And they heard about him, that is the one that is not allowing them, the Assyrians, to capture and to destroy and to scatter the children of Israel. And so the king of Syria said, go for him, get him, get him here in any way you can get him. And so early in the morning before anybody woke up, they stationed themselves and they were all there. And the servant woke up. All that the servant could see was a sign of insecurity. Look at that there, insecurity. Look at that at the back, insecurity. And look at that all around, insecurity. And so he cried out. He said, Alas, my father, what are we going to do? But the Lord will open your eyes. You know, there is so much fear when the Lord has not opened our eyes. There is so much uh, apprehension when the Lord has not opened our eyes. When we are walking about, we are just a natural sight. That's all we can see. And look at problem, and look at problem, and look at problem. We hear it everywhere. We see it everywhere. Fear will come. Your fear is driven away. When God opens your eyes, all your fears will vanish away. Look at verse 16. And he answered, fear not. And tonight I tell you, fear not. Somebody there has said, fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. My father, I can't see them. You say they that are with us are more than they that be with them. Where are they? All I can see are the chariots and all the horses. Look at verse 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, tell me, tell me out aloud, open his eyes. The man was not physically blind. With his physical natural eyes, he could see the chariots around them. But now, the Lord, the Lord answered the prayer when Elisha prayed, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And he saw. And he saw. And behold, the mountain, uh, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of, the, of, the, of fire round about Elisha chariots of fire around you angels of fire around you 
when you go out around you, when you come in around you, when you go to work around you, when you're coming from the market around you, everywhere you go, the chariots of fire will be around you in Jesus' name. It's like a fence of fire all around you. Snakes will not be able to enter to you. Cockroaches will not be able to enter to you. Evil powers will not be able to enter into your life, into your family, into your home. And then all those Assyrians that surround you, they will never touch you in Jesus' name. And when in verse 18, and when they came down to him, Elisha preached unto the Lord and said, Smite these people. I pray thee with blindness. Look at the other prayer. He prayed the prayer, and the eyes of his servants, they, they were open. He now prayed, and the eyes of the enemy will be blindfolded. Are you here, the amen of my people? And he smote them with blindness, according to the words of Elisha. Now, when he smote them with blindness, they, could st they thought they could still see. They could see Elijah as a man, Elisha as a man, but they didn't see him as Elisha. They were blind. Your enemies will not see you as to who you are. They will be blind. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way. Neither is this the city you really want to get to. Follow me. He now was in charge of the chariots from the enemy camp. You will be in charge. I said you will be in charge. And I will bring you to the man whom ye seek. And he led them to Samaria. Look at verse 20. And it came to pass when they were come into Samaria, that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see and know where they are and the lord opened their eyes you see all these that we're reading now it's not physical blindness it's not the physical opening of the eyes but they could not see that that's elisha that's the person they're looking for and when he led them to the king they couldn't see all through the way they could see the road they could see the sidewalk they could see the culvert they could see everything but they could not see the direction they were going and when they got there and they said open their eyes now the lord opened their eyes and they saw and behold they were in the midst of samaria when the eyes of your enemies are to be blind, they will become blind. When the eyes of your enemies are to be opened, when you are totally secured and they are under your authority and power, their eyes will be opened in Jesus' name. We're coming to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. And I'm reading here from verse 16. Revelation chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 16. The opening of the eyes of the blind. But you know, if you don't know you are blind, if you don't understand you are blind, are you going to cry out? Are you going to pray that the Lord will open your eyes? We're looking at Revelation chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 16. So then... Because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spill thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increase with goods, and have need of nothing. You see that? There are people that think, well, why do I go to the Bible study? I don't have any need of anything. And then I'm going to go to the Bible, but I'm just going because actually I'm all right. I have job, I have riches, I have wife, I have husband, I have children. Everything is all right for me. I don't need anything. I pray the Lord will open your eyes. And he said, and I have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I can sell thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich 
and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salves, that thou mayest see. Your time has come. You will see. I will see. All of us will see well in Jesus' name. Uh, look at the prayer we ought to pray. We're looking at Psalm 119. Psalm 119. I'm reading from verse 17. Psalm 119. Reading from verse 17. Deal bountifully with thy servant, that I may live and keep thy word. Verse 18. Open thou mine eyes. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Uh, have, have you found uh, people who are educated? In fact, they're so educated that they write journals, they write books, they write volumes, and they may even write encyclopedia. They are so knowledgeable that in a field like engineering, they can read and write, and they can interpret. In the field of uh, medicine, they can read and write. In the field of journalism, of linguistics, they can read and write. And yet, they belong to a false religion. And they belong to, and, and they have the Bible. And they can read the Bible, and yet they don't understand the way of salvation. There are some of the people that are religious, and they, would have, and they will tell you, I've read the Bible through so many times. Have you read John? Of course I have. Have you read John chapter 3, verse 3 and verse 5? Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I've read that many times. Why are you not born again? Their eyes are not open. I thank the Lord he has opened your eyes. I said I thank the Lord he has opened your eyes. You know the Lord. You know the way of the Lord. And you know the salvation in the Lord. But you should see, pray every time. Every time you open the Bible. Every time you read the Bible. Every time you study the Bible. Every time you come before the knowledge of the word of God. Verse 18. Open the mine eyes. That I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. The Lord will open all our eyes. We will not be spiritually blind again. Hey, look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. Acts, chapter 26. And look at the ministry of Paul the Apostle. Acts, chapter 26. We're looking at verse 16. Acts 26, verse 16. But tribes, and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee, a minister and a witness of both of those things, of these things which thou hast seen, and of the things in the which I will appear unto you. I will deliver in thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I now send thee. Lord, what am I going to do when I get there to those Gentiles, to those the Jewish people? And to the kings and to the governors and to the people, Lord, what am I going to do with them? Verse 18, to open their eyes. That's the ministry. That's the calling. That was the calling of Paul the Apostle. That's our calling. That has to see people who might be able to read the Bible on their own. As to see people who say they are religious. As to see people who even say, I belong to the same church like you belong to. And then you are talking to them. Have you heard about sanctification? Yes, I do. I've heard. But you know, I've always wondered the difference between salvation and sanctification. Have you heard about the Holy Ghost baptism? Yes, I've heard. But I've always wondered, what am I going to have? Well, the Holy Ghost baptism that have not got is salvation and sanctification. Have you heard about a marriage, one man, one wife, until death do us part? You know, I, I've heard that. But, um, you know, I'm with this other woman that is not my first wife. 
and, and we come to church every time and we hear every time and I'm telling you, we pray and we fast. What are you going to do about the second wife? I don't really know. For how many years have you been coming to the church now? Well, about three, four, five years. Their eyes are not open yet. Tonight, your eyes will be opened. I said our eyes will be opened. And there are people that do things. It may be in their family. The wife is doing it against the husband. And innocently. And she is hurting the husband. And the eyes are not open. Until, you know, the husband might speak out and say, You know, my wife, you always profess, I love you, I love you, I love you. Why are you doing this? He said, What is that wrong? I didn't know that. Was that hurting you? It's been hurting me for years. What did you need to tell me? I thought since you're a Christian, you're born again, we're going to the same church. I thought you realize it may be the husband on the other side doing something against the wife innocently. And he doesn't know he's hurting the wife until the wife will sum up courage and speak out and say, My husband, why are you always like this? Why are you doing this? And why are you doing that? Uh -uh. Did that bother you? That's what I've always done. And I do that with pleasure. And I do that with, you know, sincerity. Their eyes are not open. But Paul, the apostle, had the ministry. And we have the ministry. As we go to people, their eyes will be open. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins until their eyes are opened. They will not receive the forgiveness of sin. Why? They will not even pray. All they will be saying is, we have done what we shouldn't have done. We have not done what we should have done. Forgive us and the sins we know, the sins we don't know. When we are walking, my step on hands. When we are going here and there, we might unknowingly do something wrong. So forgive us all the known and the unknown sins. That's no prayer. And because their eyes are not open, they don't have forgiveness of sin. I pray your eyes will be open. You will see as God sees. And you will know as God knows that this is evil and this is something to repent of. And then you'll give them an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Let's come back to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. We're reading now from verse 49 and verse 50. This is point number two. The co his confidence and commitment to believing. His confidence and commitment to believing. Look at verse 49. And Jesus to steal and commanded him to be called. And he called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good, of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee, crying, me continue for some time. But you'll not keep on crying all the time. It will call you. It will comfort you. It will cure you. And it will solve your problem in Jesus' name. And he casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. Three things here. Number one, the calling of the blind. The calling of the blind. Jesus to steal. And called him. And the Lord is calling you. Is calling your name. And as the Lord calls you. You will answer. When the Lord calls me. I will answer. As the Lord calls me. I will answer. The moment God calls me. I will answer. I pray you will hear the voice of the Lord. And as he calls you. You know that he has power. He has power to forgive. He has power to open your eyes. He has power to lead you in the right direction. Psalm 145, Psalm 145, verses 8 and 9. Psalm 145, verses 8 and 9. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all. How many people? The Lord is good to all. I said how many people? 
The Lord is good to all, and His tender mercy is over all His works. Look at verse 19. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear Him. That blind man, but Bartimaeus, had a desire. And the Lord was ready to fulfill the desire of that man. Your desires will be fulfilled. Your prayers will be answered. And your crying to God will not be in vain in Jesus' name. He also will hear their cry as Jesus heard the cry of Bartimaeus. He also will hear their cry and will save them. We are coming to Matthew chapter 20 and we are reading from verse 34. He has power, he has ability, enablement. He can do it. He will do it for everyone today. We are looking at Matthew chapter 20 verse 34. In Matthew chapter 20 verse 34, so Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes and immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. Their eyes received sight and they followed him. Can that happen today? Can you open your eyes? Physically, can you open your eyes? Can you heal your sick body? Can you open your spiritual eyes? Look at um, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Hebrews 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same, tell me, yesterday, and tell me again, and today, and then, say it now. Do you believe that? Jesus Christ, the same, yesterday, and today and forever. Let's come back to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, the Lord had called him. He was not going to respond. And how did he respond? Look at it. Mark chapter 10, we're reading from verse 50. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. He, casting away his garment, Blind man, why did you cast away your garment? One is the badge of blindness. It's a special garment blind people wear so that when a car, when a chariot is coming from a distance, the light of that chariot, the light of that car shining on that dress will show that that is somebody there. And so they will not trample on him or run him down or crush him to death. And he said, I am going to Christ. He's my Savior. He's my Redeemer. He's my healer. And he's going to recover my sight. This badge of blindness I will not need anymore. Number two, this dress associated him with all blind people. Because that's the thing they wore in Israel. If they were blind, it's like, you're like me, I'm like you. But now, this batch of association with the blind, association with the people who cannot see their life, they cannot see the road, they cannot see their future, they cannot see their destiny, I'm no more going to be with them. I'm going to be with Christ. It's going to sever me from them, separate me from them. And so this batch of association, I cast everything away. He's saying, I depended on this kind of garment. And once I wear that garment, I know that people will not push me down because they could not see me. But now, on that which I depended in the past, to protect me and to be with me and to shield me. I'm going to Christ now. And Christ will be my deliverer, my redeemer, my savior. I will not depend on this anymore. I will depend on Christ. That's why I cast the thing aside. For us today, what does that signify? What are we to cast aside as we're coming unto the Lord Jesus Christ? We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 31, cast away from you 
all your transgressions. Maybe you are in an association. If you are in this association, you do what you do. You act the way they act. And it is the sign, it is the symbol of your association with this group of people. The same crime you commit, the same defilement you have. As you are going to be saved and you want to separate yourself from that kind of association, all the things are connected together. Like the garment of that man, like your transgression, like your defilement, you cast them away. Maybe you're in a family. There is something that associates you with that family. It's idolatry. The idol of the family. You have it, she has it, he has it, and the parents have it. And that thing that associates you with the idolatrous world, that's what you are casting away. It might even be a kind of dress that is associated with prostitution. A kind of dress that is associated with um, evil and the defilement. You cast the everything away as you are coming to Christ. Look at that verse 31. Cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed and make a new heart. Make you a new heart and a new spirit for why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure. In the days of the wicked, of him that dies, says the Lord God, wherefore turn yourselves and leave ye your cast all those things away, and the Lord will have mercy on you. Amen. Look at Isaiah chapter 31. Isaiah chapter 31, and we're reading from verse 6. Isaiah 31. Verse 6, turn ye unto him from whom the children of Israel as deeply revolted. For in that day every man shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which your own hands have made unto you for his sin. Every man shall cast away as you are coming to Christ and you want to have salvation in Christ, redemption in Christ. You cast away all your idols. Are you making an idol of a man? An idol of a woman? An idol of a one old papa somewhere? An idol of an old mama somewhere? An idol of money? an idol of whatever. It says, cast away all your idols. So, idols will not be your ruin, sin, transgression, will not be your ruin in Jesus' name. And the church said, Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, let us cast aside every weight, let us leave completely every weight, and the sin we do so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. All those things that are besetting sins in your life, you cast them away. You cast them aside. We're coming back to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, we're reading from verse 50. Mark chapter 10, verse 50. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. You see, that sentence ends with, he came to Jesus. There are some people that are saying, I don't know what to do again. I've repented. I've cast away my transgression. But I'm not, I don't have the feeling of salvation. I don't have the confidence, the assurance of salvation. 
You know what? If the man cast away his garment, the badge of association with the blind, with the defiled, with the society, and he did not come to Jesus, he'll not receive his sight. Casting away the garment, that's good, that's necessary. Repentance, that's good, that's necessary. Casting away your sin, that's good, that's necessary. But you must come to Jesus. You must come to Jesus. He's the Savior, is the way, and is the only one that can pardon your sin. And he came to Jesus. As you come, he will not cast you away. He will have mercy on every sinner, every backslider that comes in Jesus' name. And so you understand now, salvation does not come because I cried and cried. You must come to Jesus. Salvation must, does not come because I've, uh, you know, repented. I've done everything I thought I could do. I've confessed. That's not enough. You must come to Jesus and rely on him. And believe in him as your savior, as your only savior. Look at Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. I'm reading here from verse 5. Luke chapter 19, verse 5. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. You see that? Uh, you must embrace Christ, believe Christ, and receive Christ because as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to those that believed on his name. Look at verse 8, and the cursed church, and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. He made, he was ready to make restitution. You see, there are people, I repent, I repent. What's the evidence you have repented? You must be willing to make restitution. It's like a little child that uh, dipped hand in the, pot, in the pot and then took a piece of meat and was chewing. At that time, the mother came in and said, what are you doing? And then she kept on chewing, I am sorry, I am sorry. And kept on chewing and kept on swallowing. What's that in your mouth? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And kept on chewing, kept on enjoying what he has told him. The same thing, if you say you are sorry, if you say you repent, you must be willing to repent of the money you have taken, of the things you have done that are not right. You must be willing to make right the wrong. The Lord will give us grace. I said the Lord will give us grace. The people who are waiting and waiting, they want to do restitution. They know the amount of money they should pay to the person they stole from. They know the house address of the person. They know all the details, how they will do that. They say, I'm waiting for counseling. I want to see John. I want to see Matthew. I want to see Andrew. I want to see one of the disciples of Jesus Christ before I can make this restitution. Zacchaeus did not wait. I'm waiting for the pastor. I'm waiting for this. I'm waiting for that. Once your conscience accuses you that this is wrong, it may not even be that you need to restore any money. It may be that you just need to apologize and say, I am sorry for what I've done. It gives me guilt in my conscience. It gives me kind of oppression. It gives me kind of unbelief. I cannot believe when I pray because this is always coming to my heart. Go to that man and say, I'm sorry. Go to that woman and say, I'm sorry. Make right what is wrong. Look at verse 9. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For so much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. He will save everyone. 
as you call upon the Lord, he will have mercy upon you and salvation will come in Jesus' name. When salvation comes, there'll be righteousness. When salvation comes, there'll be a change of life. When salvation comes, there'll be new life. That new life will not miss you. Look at John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 3. John chapter 3. We're reading from verse 3. It says in verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You repent of sin, don't go yet. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And he is the one that gives that salvation. Look at verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. I want to plead with you. You'll be coming to the Bible study. You may come into deep and light Bible church, and you may come in for a long time. Sometimes you cry, sometimes you weep, sometimes you say, I repent. Sometimes you punish yourself, I will not do that again. Sometimes you say, when am I going to stop all this? You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. As you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Savior, and you trust Him, and you lean on Him, assurance of salvation will come. Peace will come in your heart, and then righteousness by grace will come into your life in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 9. Romans chapter 10, we're reading from verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You believe with your heart. You confess with your mouth. He's my Lord. He's my Savior. There's no other one that can save me. He died for me on the cross of Calvary. He's my substitute. The final sacrifice. Thou shalt be saved. Look at verse 10. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. When you truly believe, righteousness will come in your life. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Salvation, righteousness will be yours in Jesus' name. Look at Mark now, chapter 10. We'll come to point number three. The kill and the conversion of the believer, of Bartimaeus. We're looking at Mark, chapter 10. We're reading from verse 51 and verse 52. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Number one, his request. His request. He didn't just come and, you know, close his mouth. He didn't say, I've cried, and you should have known what I'm looking for. Number one, his request. Verse 51. And Jesus answered and said, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might have some money from you, that I might have some arms from you, what? That I might receive my sight. You must have your request. Request. Look at his request. He said, that I might receive my sight. Tell him what you need, salvation. Tell him what you need, holiness. Tell him what you need, sanctification. Tell him what you need in your heart. Tell him what you need, healing. Tell him what you need, Holy Ghost baptism. Tell him what you need, the grace to be stable and to stand in the will of God. Look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask, and it shall be given you. 
Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. The Lord will open his door of mercy unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. Everyone that asks for salvation. Everyone that asks for redemption. Everyone that asks for forgiveness. Everyone that asks for eternal life. Everyone that asks for the sight. Everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Look at verse 11. And if ye being evil, not to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father, which is in heaven, your Father which is in heaven, give good things? Salvation is good. Forgiveness is good. Redemption is good. Holiness is good. The grace of God is good. Godliness is good. Sanctification is good. Power. Holy Ghost baptism is good. Healing is good. How much more? Shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? You will ask, you will receive. James chapter 1. In James chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 6. James chapter 1. We're reading from verse 6. But let him ask in faith. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Come back to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, number one, his request. Number two, his faith, his faith. Look at verse 52 here. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Everything we get from the Lord is by faith. Healing, by faith. Salvation, by faith. Sanctification, by faith. Holy Ghost baptism, by faith. Help by faith, support by faith, abundant grace all by faith. And as you believe the Lord today, everything you are asking Him spiritual, everything you are asking Him material, everything you are asking Him, He will grant unto you in Jesus' name. We're looking at Matthew chapter 15, verse 28. Matthew chapter 15, verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. This is a woman that kept on crying to Christ, crying unto the Lord, and will not give up. And will not give up. Even when it appeared she wasn't going to get what she was asking for, she kept on, kept on knocking. If you keep on asking, you are going to receive. You keep on knocking, you are going to receive. You keep on seeking, you are going to receive in Jesus' name. O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Your daughter will be made whole. Your son will be made whole. Your heart, your spirit, your soul will be made whole. And if you yourself, if you're sick, you'll be made whole in Jesus' name. You will recover. I said you will recover. Healing will come. Deliverance will come. On what basis? On the basis of believing. Look at Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 34. Mark chapter 5, verse 34. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Are you their daughter? I said, Are you their daughter? Thy faith has made you whole. Are you their son? Thy faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. It has happened. Look at verse 35. While he yet spake, they came, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain, which said, Thy daughter is dead. 
Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard that word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, somebody say it for me. Whatever they said has happened, the final thing has happened, there's no remedy again, don't worry about that. Say that again. Say that to yourself. Be not afraid, only believe. Your answer will definitely come. It's recovery. I want you to look at Mark again. Mark chapter 10, verse 52. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received a sight. Immediately, when are you going to receive? I said, when are you going to receive? You receive your sight in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 8, Matthew chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 8. Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 8. Look at this man, Bartimaeus. The Lord did not touch him. The Lord did not push him. The Lord did not anoint him. The Lord did not pour oil on him. The Lord did not do anything. He spoke the word. And what word did he speak? Receive your sight. And once he spoke that word, that word was fulfilled. The spoken word will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. It says, go thy way. Thy faith has made you whole. That word will make you whole. Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 8. Matthew chapter 8 verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but somebody there, speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Look at verse 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. As thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And the servant, his servant, was healed in that self same hour. This is your hour. This is your time. We're coming back to Mark chapter 10. I was looking at verse 52. Mark chapter 10, verse 52. The man had been killed now. And let us see what followed that showed his conversion. Let us see what followed that showed that the Lord did not only open his physical eyes, but the Lord touched his heart. The Lord turned his heart. The Lord converted him, and the Lord changed everything within him. The same thing will happen as you believe tonight in Jesus' name. Is able to heal the body, is able to heal the soul, is able to touch your heart, able to touch your spirit, able to turn you around, able to transform you because it's the same power, the same utterance, the same declaration coming from the mouth of Jesus Christ brings the forgiveness. The same declaration brings the transformation. The same declaration brings the total cure and the total conversion. And as you call upon the Lord tonight, as you look unto the Lord tonight, and it touches your body, it will touch your soul. It will transform your soul. It will transform your spirit. And you will know that he walks outward, outside, and he walks inside. He walks on the body. He walks on the soul. He walks on the present, and he walks on your eternal future. And it is the salvation. That's what takes you to the eternal future. It is the forgiveness. That is what takes you to the eternal future. And it is the change. It is the transformation that will not make you to follow Jesus and you have a decision, a kind of decision that you are not turning back and you are following the Lord all the days of your life. You'll follow the Lord in Jesus' name. You see, there are people, they only go with the healing. He has healed me. He has healed me. 
weight and let him do the combustion as well. He has touched my body. He has delivered me from all the physical things. Let him touch you and turn your life around and the grace to follow the Lord he will give unto you. The power to go and see no more he will give unto you. The power to live in newness of life he will give unto you in Jesus' name. See the way it happened to this blind man and Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday, today and forever. What happened to him will happen to you. Physical miracle, spiritual miracle, the healing of your body and the salvation of your soul, the recovery of your health and the conversion of your spirit. We're looking at Mark chapter 10 and I'm reading from verse 52. And Jesus said unto him, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Somebody there shout amen. And immediately that same sentence immediately that same single declaration immediately that same utterance immediately that same powerful word coming from the mouth of the lord jesus christ give the healing as well as the conversion immediately he received the sight and followed Jesus in the way. And followed Jesus in the way. What's the meaning of that? And what is the implication of that? That he followed Jesus in the way. Let's look at John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Following Jesus. Following Jesus. That's the conversion. Following Jesus. That's the transformation. Following Jesus. That's the new life. Because you know, the old life, it was siege by the wayside, begging, begging. He didn't didn't go back to the bed, begging again. When you have that conversion, you'll not go back to the begging again. You'll not go back to all those things you are doing in the past. Conversion brings a new life. It changes your path that you are not following Jesus. You are following the footsteps of Jesus. We're looking at John chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. John chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. And when he put forth his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. That's what the man did after the conversion, after the transformation, after the healing. The, the sheep follow him. It wasn't a goat anymore. It wasn't a beggar anymore. It wasn't a blind sinner anymore. But they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow. The man did not follow a Pharisee, a Sadducee, a stranger, a religious personality. And a stranger will they not follow, but they will flee from him. For they know not the voice of the strangers. The man followed the Lord you will follow the Lord. I said you will follow the Lord. That's the evidence of the conversion. Somebody says, I believe the Lord. I'm converted. I'm, you know, a child of God. But you must follow the Lord. If you are not following the Lord, there's no evidence you are born again. There's no evidence you are converted. We're looking at John chapter 8 verse 11. John chapter 8 verse 11. She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. New life. Somebody help me shout new life. New life will come to everyone. As you follow the Lord, you're not following drunkards. You're not following the people who are swearing. You are not following street boys or those who are living under the bridge. You are not following criminals and, you know, thugs and bad people. You are not following the past way of sinning. Now you are following the Lord and you say, go and sin no more. Look at verse 12. Then Jesus spake again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. Look at the blind man. His eyes are now opened. And now following after the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not return to his blindness. You will not return to your blindness. 
you will not return to your vomit. You will not return to your uh, immorality. You will not return to your vileness and defilement. In Jesus' name, it says, He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Look at verse 31. Verse 31. In verse 31, it says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If he continue in my word. You're not following your own self-will anymore. You're not following society anymore. You're not following after your own path of sinning anymore. You now continue in his word. You're following Christ. You're following Christ. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. You'll be a true disciple. Look at chapter 12, chapter 12 of John. John chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 26. John chapter 12, verse 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. You see what the man did? I want to serve the Lord. I want to worship the Lord. I abandon the way of darkness. I abandon all my blindness. I want to serve the Lord with all my heart now. I'm so grateful he healed me. I'm giving him my heart. I'm giving him my will. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, them will my father honor. Look at verse 46, John Chapter 12, verse 46, it says, I am, the I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. That's what the man did. He didn't want to abide in darkness, and then he was watching the Lord. Where the Lord goes, I will go. What, what the Lord does, I will do. And what the Lord says, I will obey. Everything about me, about my new life, will be following the Lord. I'm following and walking in the footsteps of the Lord. We're coming to First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 21. First Peter chapter 2. Reading from verse 21. For even here unto were ye called... Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, the life he lived, a life of holiness, a life of goodness, a life of love, a life of obedience to the Father, a life of total submission to the Father. It says, he has left us an example that he should follow his steps, that he should follow his steps. The grace to follow, the Lord will give to everyone. The Lord will give to you. Your neighbors will know you are following the Lord. Your family will know you are following the Lord. Your conscience will know you are following the Lord. And whatever you do, you'll know, you'll say, that's what the Lord would have done. That's what the Lord would have said. That's where the Lord would have gone. You'll keep on following the Lord in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 14, we're reading from verse 4. Revelation chapter 14, we're reading from verse 4. These are they which are not defiled with women. These are they which are not defiled with immorality. These are they which are not defiled with fornication. These are they which are not defiled with adultery. These are they which are not defiled with pornography. These are they which are not defiled with women. For they are virgins. The, these are they which follow the Lamb. These are they which follow the Lamb. Whithersoever he goes, these were the redeemed among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. We we'll see the example and all the lessons we have learned from this blind Bartimaeus who was not blind anymore. And I pray that the miracle of his life will be, re will be repeated in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. We've seen his condition. We've seen his cry. We've seen his confidence. We've seen his commitment to believing. We've seen his skill. We've seen his healing. We've seen his recovery. We've seen his uh, consecration. We've seen his conversion. And I pray that all that happened to that man will happen to every one of us. 
physically, you'll get your healing. Spiritually, you'll get your salvation. And the grace to follow the Lord without looking back, you will continue in that grace until it comes in Jesus' name. You will not be tired. You will not be weary. As he followed the Lord continually, continuously, all through, consistently, you too, you will follow the Lord. I have decided, I have decided, I have decided to follow Jesus. I can't hear you to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me and the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. Following Jesus, following Jesus all the way. There will be no turning back in your life. In Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and have a repetition of this miracle power of God in our lives. To open our eyes. To open the eyes of our mind. And to open the eyes of our spirit. Let's pray to the Lord now. That the Lord himself will do the same thing that he did for this man. You recover. You recover. Cry unto him. Call upon him. And tell him your condition. Tell him the predicament. Tell him the situation. Tell him, oh Lord, this is my need. Don't let anyone shout you down. Don't let anyone silence you. Don't let anyone stop your praying. Tell the Lord from the depth of your heart Oh Lord, this is my condition Touch my heart Touch my body Touch my eyes Touch my ears Touch my soul Touch my spirit Oh Lord, turn me around And do something Lord, I believe Lord, I believe Lord, I believe And I'm looking unto you right now And as he touches you As he heals you As he converts you As he sanctifies you As he answers your request Then you are following the Lord constantly Following the Lord consistently And following the Lord With all consecration With all your heart until you see him face to face in the great beyond, open your mouth and say, Lord, I'll never look back, I'll never forsake you, I'll keep on following. And the Lord will grant you grace to follow constantly until the very end.